Hello, Elisha Medlin here with Five Elements of Wholeness. And today on our Master Mind class, we have Marvin Deuce. He is an amazing guy. I have known him for the last almost 20 years now. He is a licensed massage therapist and energy body worker. And he has been for the last three years. He graduated from Myotherapy College of Utah in both their basic and advanced courses. He became an instructor immediately after graduating and was told he had a gift for teaching. The more he taught, the more he realized how much he loved doing it and has continued to do it ever since. He also helped to create the Myotherapy Institute Home Study Program for Massage and Therapeutic Body Work. This program taught everything needed to complete a 600-hour program for licensure. He was the executive director of the college for many years until he decided to leave and spend most of his time in his private practice. He has taught hundreds of people all over the country. He act, <clears throat> excuse me, he achieved national certifications of both basic and therapeutic massage and body work. He has a successful private practice in Salt Lake City, Utah that focuses on natural healing. His focus is to help people balance their body structurally from the outside in for pain management issues and nutritionally and emotionally from the inside out for other health issues. He works with clients not only in his office, but he's also developed the ability to work on people remotely. He also does his work on animals. He's been married for over 33 years, has six children, three grandchildren. He loves the outdoors. He loves to camp, fish, water, ski, and to parasail, just to name a few. And he also loves to travel and share what he does with others. Marv, thank you so much for coming today. I'm so excited to have you on. Well, thanks for having me. I, I am Welcome. very excited to be here. And um, I'm excited that you've invited me because um, the things that I have to share are very interesting. And um, the, more, the more I learned about the body and how amazing it is, one of, one of God's amazing creations, okay? Um, it's talking to us continually. The problem is, is most people, they don't know or understand sometimes what it's saying or we're not listening or we're not, we're not you know. Um, so anyway, my hope today is to share with you many of the ways that the body does communicate with us. First off, spiritually, then physically, then nutritionally, and then also on an emotional level. So what I'd like to do, and again, uh, you might see me looking uh, kind of around my screen here because I've, I've made some notes um, so that I can kind of keep on track as far as, um, flowing through this, this little class, but um, I'm gonna try and keep it very simple and basic because uh, many of us don't realize really how complex the body really is and how, how it functions. And so my first question to you is with, with the topic of the month being effective com communication, my question to you is, is what is, what is part of a, communicating with people effectively. Maybe I, Alicia, maybe I can ask, ask you that. What, what do you consider effective communication? Well, I think a lot of times when it comes to communicating with other people, um, we, we, we step into assumptions or expectations or conditions and we just assume that people know what we want or assume what, um, what they want from us. And so there ends up being miscommunication because we're not clearly communicating what it is that we desire or want from the other person and vice versa. And so when you have effective communication, you're being 100% honest, not only with yourself, but with the person that you're talking to as to what you want without, you know, including expectations or assumptions to that. Okay. And that's great. And the thing that I want to kind of focus on today is part of what I feel, and I think a lot of people would agree, is that effective communication requires listening. Sometimes people are talking and they're telling us something and we're too busy on our little cell phone doing social media or whatever, and we're not really listening. Um, well, and I think also we, we tend to, um, we're thinking about what we're gonna say and not really listening to what they're saying. Sure. Uh, another part is, is a lot of times um, 
we might want to ask a question. And when we ask a question, are we listening? Are we listening for, um, for what it's trying to tell us? Do we understand what it's trying to tell us? And that's, that's what we have to remember. Um, you know, being listening allows us to be better in tune with what's going on in our bodies. Um, again, asking questions and listening uh, for the answers. Sometimes those answers, they may not come immediately. But if we think about something and we kind of contemplate it throughout the day, often that answer might come later in the day, okay? But over my 30 years of training and experience working with people, um, I've developed some skills that allows me to communicate with people's bodies and ask them questions, uh, things that um, can help them with things that they might be struggling with. And so, I would like to share with you um, some of these ideas and examples of how the body often does this. Um, and then uh, later uh, at the end, I have an offer. If you want to try to explore some of those things, um, then, then we're able to do that. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to first start off with, as I mentioned before, there are four different things that I wanted to talk about today. Um, in effective communication. The first thing I want to talk about is, is spiritually, okay? Um, how does the spirit communicate to us? Alicia, any thoughts? Well, for me, um, it communicates, mainly I hear, I, hear, um, I hear a voice within my heart that gets translated into, you know, my ears or, or however that wants to be looked at. But Mainly I hear the promptings of a voice or um, just, a, just a, a still quiet voice, I guess is the best way to put it. Sometimes I get it through a, a good feeling, but mainly I get it from actual uh, a communication within my heart or my, my mind, whatever one comes first. <laughs> okay, and that's great because sometimes it does, it comes like uh, you've heard some people say, I had this burning in my chest that told me it felt right or it felt good, or it was just, again, a good feeling. Sometimes it comes from an, an inner voice that we might hear or a prompting that we might get. And uh, an example of this would be, and, and I think we've all maybe heard examples similar to this, is Maybe, maybe you're driving down the road on the freeway going at a pretty good speed and uh, there's a lot of traffic and stuff and all of a sudden one of you gets this prompting, you need to slow down. And Marv, just to let you know, we do have a guest on, on as well, Jean. Oh, great. Jean's on, so just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Um, and so, the, my question is, is do we listen to that voice? Do we listen to that prompting? And quite often we hear these stories where we adhere, or we, we listen to that prompting and all of a sudden we slow down and right, all of a sudden right ahead of us, there's this big collision. And had we not listened to that prompting, we might've been right in the middle of that collision, okay? We hear stories like similar to that, um, or, or maybe you have a teenage daughter who wants to go out and hang out with a bunch of friends. And you get this strong prompting that, oh, I don't know, it, it doesn't feel very good. And you don't allow them go. Now you're the bad guy, but later you might hear of some tragedy that happened to that group of kids. And, and again, because you listened to that prompting, you saved yourself a lot of grief, a lot of heartache, and possibly your child's life. So we get these promptings or we hear these little voices, you know, and do we listen to those? Um, or a neighbor or a friend who might be struggling with some types of problems and we get this prompting that, yeah, I feel strong that I need to call that person and see how they're doing. And then we call them and, and talk to them and all of a sudden, yeah, you know, gosh, I've really been struggling. And it allows you an opportunity to be that person to help that individual. And, and so these are things that, just examples that I could, I could think of 
Um, I'm going to tell you a story of a gentleman that came in just a little over a week ago, um, struggling with a, a number of health issue problems. Uh, again, I won't use names, but this gentleman came in. Um, his story is, is that one day he was home, his wife was at work, the kids were out kind of playing, doing their own thing, and he was the only one home. Well, he had this... Uh, his chimney uh, stack above his house that needed to get painted. And so he decided that he had some time and he was going to paint that chimney stack. Now this chimney stack was on top of his two story house. So he went and got his ladder, set up his ladder, gathered up all of his paint supplies. And just prior to getting on the ladder, he heard a voice saying, Ooh, you may, maybe you shouldn't get up on that ladder. There's nobody else home to help you if there's a problem. But, you know, quite often we ignore those promptings and we think, ah, I've done it hundreds of times. I'm going to be just fine, right? So he climbs up the ladder and gets up there. And guess what? You know what happened? He fell 30 feet. Okay. Now, nobody's home. And it just so happens that a neighbor, um, three or four houses away, the husband and the wife were out working in the yard. Well, the husband didn't hear anything, but the wife heard a noise and she wasn't sure what it was, but she had a very strong prompting to tell her husband to go investigate and find out what that sound was. So as he went to investigate, he found his neighbor lying on the ground, unconscious, they called the ambulance, they took him away, five fractured ribs, a collapsed lung, was in the hospital for three weeks. Um, and here, you know, he was in my office holding on to this trauma still. And so we were able to go in and release this memory of this trauma that was still weakening his system or his body. This is something that had happened 17 years ago and his body was still holding on to it. So when he thought about that experience, he could still feel the emotions and everything that came as a result of that experience. And once we're able to release the trauma from his body, he could think about it and not feel the emotion connected to it anymore. It doesn't erase the experience, but it does release the emotion that the body holds on to or it stores. So, um, so anyway, so from a physical, um, I mean, sorry, a, a spiritual point of view, we need to listen to those promptings. They're there for a reason. Okay. So um, now let's move on to uh, the next topic, which I wanted to discuss was physically. How does the body communicate to us physically? Okay. Um, in my experience being a licensed therapist for 30 years, um, I deal a lot with people that are experiencing pain. Now understand that pain is a protective mechanism. It's there to tell you something is not right. Something is out of balance go get it fixed. And in our society, a lot of us or a lot of people, they're not aware of some of the things that can be done to alleviate from a natural standpoint, these aches and pains that we're living with on a daily basis. Now, most of us or most people would probably go to their primary care. Uh, he might prescribe some pain medication he might send you for uh, physical therapy, um, and, and these can be beneficial and helpful, but the problem is, is they do make us feel better, but they often don't fix the problem. And a lot of times, if you can fix or uh, align the body, and again, understand that some of these um, things come because the body's either structurally out of balance, um, it could be a joint or a muscle, it could be uh, an emotional issue that's, that's we're hanging on to that could be causing these aches and pains. But if we can balance these imbalances, then we get a decrease in pain. So if I have somebody coming into my office with a knee pain, 
I might look at the knee and check out and try to see what's going on in that knee. Where is something maybe off? And if we can work to fix that imbalance, uh, I can get them to stand up off, their ta off the massage table and put weight on it and they don't feel any pain anymore. And they, and they feel great. Um, the same thing is true with like low back pain or neck pain or anything like that. But if we fix those things, the body has the ability to uh, turn off those pain signals and then we get, we get relief from those things. So, um, and, and this might be a little hard for many of you to believe, but um, this energy work that often is done either physically um, or energetically, it can be done remotely as well. Um, energy healing has been around for thousands of years. And when you think about probably the, on a religious level, you know, the, the best person that we can, we can use as an example was Jesus Christ. And we know that he understood the body and the energy of the body and how to use that to heal. Um, and so he, he's probably one of our best examples. Um, now, what you need to remember is that muscles, emotions, organs of the body and negative belief systems, they can all contribute to pain. Okay, and I know that may sound hard to believe, but um, it, it, it can be. Um, and I'll just give you an example of uh, something that happened to me this few years ago. I had somebody in my office came in with low back pain. And so I went through and I did everything that I'd been taught to do to, to try to bring balance to the body and help alleviate that pain. Well, when I was done, and again, when I work with people, I do try to communicate back and forth. I love feedback. So I might be asking, okay, how does it feel now? Or if I do this, does it increase the pain or does it decrease the pain? And so anyway, so as I finished working on this person, I did everything I knew how to do. I asked them, I said, okay, how does it feel now? And they're like, oh, it still hurts. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. So then I went back to work, tried to do a few more things. And I said, okay, now how is it now? Oh my gosh, it still hurts. And I'm like trying to figure out what more I can do. And um, I hear this little voice in my head that said, try this. Now you need to understand that this is, you know, I work with people all the time, but I, and I've learned that I need to trust this, but sometimes I'll question that little voice or that prompting. And in my head, while I'm working on this person, I'm thinking to myself, why would I do that? I never learned anything like that before. And, uh, and so I'd ignore it and I'd keep working on this person, trying other things that I'd been taught. And, and I say, how does it feel now? And this is still hurts. And I'm like, oh, I just don't understand why it's not getting any better. And I'd hear another voice, do this, try it. And finally, I just kind of throw my arms up in the air. I said, okay, I'm going to trust what you're telling me. I don't understand why, but I'm going to do it. And I did exactly what it told me to do. And I said, how does it feel now? And I said, oh my gosh, it's gone. I can't believe it. And so I've learned to, to trust those promptings as I'm working with people um, in my office. Now, when I talk about um, the muscles and the emotions and the organs being tied together, again, hard to understand and hard to believe, but I'm just gonna give in a little example. Now, the low back muscles, they're called the quadratus lumborum. Um, you also have your IT band, which is the tensor fascia lata muscles, which is on your side of your thigh that go from your hips down to your uh, knees. And then you have your hamstrings that are in the back of the thigh. Now, these are like hip stabilizing muscles. And so, again, in traditional Chinese medicine, they believe that the low back, these muscles associate with a large intestine. Now, if we're having bowel issues, digestion and bowel issues, then the way the body might try to communicate to you that I'm having an internal problem is by creating weakness in these muscles and then it, they don't hold the skeleton in position or in place. And then we get more aches and pains. Um, there are emotions that tie into the large intestine as well. 
And many of them tie into financial worries. And so if we're struggling financially in our lives, then again, we might be having more of these lower back discomforts or pains. And so, um, so these, these are ways that, that, you know, the body can be affected. Now I'm gonna give you an example of a gentleman that came in once and he was having pain in his rhomboid muscles. Now the rhomboid muscles are located between the shoulder blades and the spine. Okay, that's where his pain was. And he came in and in my training, I knew that the rhomboid muscles associate with the liver organ. Okay, and the liver organ emotionally ties into anger. And so I asked him, I said, hey, you know, and this is a guy that's older, is in his late 60s. I says, I explained to him that the, the muscles he's talking about deal with the liver and the liver is the anger center of the body. Are you having any anger issues? He says to me, I have all kinds of anger issues. And I said, that's where your problem is. And so I didn't even start working to massage those muscles on his, on his back. I work directly with releasing the anger that he had been carrying. And by the end that we released the anger, his comment to me was, he says, oh my gosh, this is interesting. I said, why, what's going on? And he says, you haven't even touched my back yet. And I can already feel those muscles starting to relax. Okay, so the body is an amazing thing. And again, we just need to understand um, what it's telling us. Sometimes, again, we do things that we think we're gonna be okay and we end up traumatizing the body. I'm gonna give you another quick example of this physical pain. Uh, one of my clients that I've got coming in now, she's in her 80s, but when she was in her 50s, they were doing some remodeling work in their house. And she was trying to help her husband and they were doing some sheetrocking. And I don't know, anybody that's worked with sheetrock knows how heavy that can be, right? Well, they were, they were doing some ceiling work, sheetrock, and he called her in. He says, I'm trying to screw the sheetrock in. Come in and stand up and use your head to hold the sheetrock up. And she stood there with sheetrock sheets on her head trying to lift it up and hold it in place while he tried to screw them in, okay? Well, over a period of time, you need to understand that that was very stressful for her body and a lot of her muscles and things, they just couldn't handle the stress. And as a result of that trauma to her body, it created compressed discs in her spine. She ended up later having neck surgeries, back surgeries, um, for the pain that she was experiencing. And then later um, she had a, it's called a, a pain stimulator implanted in her back. And what these pain stimulators do is they get charged and then they create a vibration that kind of breaks up the pain signals, kind of like a TENS unit or something like that. And so they get relief for maybe three or four hours and then they have to recharge it again and, and use it. And she did that for a while, but she got tired of doing that and it just wasn't giving her the relief. Then she went to opioids and she did that for years and it didn't like how that was making her feel. And so finally, you know, over years and years of frustrations and living with these pains, a good friend of hers uh, referred her in to come see me. And so she came in and we started balancing her body and she started to feel better. And she couldn't believe the difference in how she was feeling. Now, is she always 100% pain-free? No, not always. But she's got herself off of the opioids because one, she doesn't like the way it makes her feel. Do you know what I mean? But we're able to help her monitor some of her pain levels or not monitor, but manage some of her pain levels. And, you know, she does different things to try to do that more from a natural basis rather than relying on pain medication. And so, um, so again, there are techniques and things that can be done without relying on um, having to do drugs and things like that. So, um, so anyway, so, so that's, that's another story. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is nutritionally. 
and how nutritionally these things can be very important to the body as well. Now, from a nutritional standpoint, you need to understand that the body uses vitamins and minerals to fuel the body and give us energy. And if we're not eating well and we've got a poor diet, we can't have a lean, mean running machine. Okay, we just can't. If we're not giving the body the nutrients we need, it's like putting bad gas in your car, but still expecting high performance. It, it, it's not gonna happen. You know, it might be forgiving for a little while, but over time uh, it's wearing and tearing. And then we get a lot of breakdowns and a lot of problems when it comes to like our, our cars and stuff. So if we've got poor diet, then it, does, it doesn't work well. It just can't do it. And so my, the question we ask here is how does the body communicate to us for nutritional issues? Okay. Well, it might cause cravings for certain foods. You know, and those cravings aren't always positive cravings in, in the, let's take sugar, for example, <laughs> how many people crave sugar on a regular basis? Is that, is that helping us in a positive way? Usually not. Sugar is very unhealthy to the body, attacks the joints, creates a lot of, uh, you believe, arthritic problems, uh, those types of things. But it also weakens the system, its immune system. Uh, and so some of those things are, are you know, are not great, but often we gravitate to um, so, salt, salty foods. And that might be an indication that the body is trying to tell you you're lacking in sodium, okay? Um, let's say you're having leg cramps and charley horses and you don't understand why. Well, the body is trying to tell you you need to up your calcium and your magnesium and maybe your potassium levels are off, okay? And and sometimes we might even take, a, take something and we don't notice a difference. And unfortunately, sometimes we're taking a product that doesn't work well with our system energetically. And so sometimes we have to find the right one. And once we do, then we notice a big difference in, in how it works. And so, um, but also how many people rely on pain or not pain medication, but sleep helps because we have a hard time going to sleep at night. And many of the, the or we're having anxiety issues, or we're having depression issues. Some of these are nutritional imbalances that can be very easily fixed without relying on medication. Um, sleep problems could be as simple as low calcium and low magnesium, because your serotonin levels are critical, good serotonin levels for sleeping well at night. And if your levels are low, then again, we're not gonna sleep well at night. And if we can increase those serotonin levels, then all of a sudden we notice we're sleeping better, we're staying asleep, we're waking up more refreshed in the mornings when we get up. So the foods and things that we eat can dramatically affect uh, things that happen to us in our lives. Um, sometimes we overeat certain foods, okay? So again, um, as, as we eat, we like what we like and we often eat it again and again and again. We overeat that food. And sometimes we don't realize that if we overeat certain foods, there's often sensitivities that are created. We can, you know, how, how does the body speak to you when it comes to like a food sensitivity? Well, it might be a food allergy or you might get, have sinus congestion when you have dairy or when you have corn or oats or certain foods that tend to be more allergy forming foods. You know, how's the body trying to tell us that we're sensitive to that food is, well, after we eat it later that day or the next morning, we might be very congested, okay? Um, or we might get really tired after we eat a particular food, okay? And that fatigue and tiredness is the body trying to tell you, wow, I'm having a hard time digesting this food and it's drawing all energy resources from the rest of the body to help digest that food and we get really fatigued and tired. Or it might just be a stomach pain. Oh man, that's not sitting well with me uh, in my gut. You know what I mean? So, so there are these different ways that uh, things can are communicating to us. And a lot of my clients often um, will have issues or problems and they'll call me and say, oh man, I'm struggling. Can you just tap into my body and energy and just ask? maybe what's causing this feeling. And I'll give you an example. One of my 
regular clients uh, has some friends that have a timeshare in Mazatlan and every year they would go to Mazatlan and stay at this resort. And I knew she was gonna be gone. And, and so anyway, about three or four days into her couple of weeks being gone, um, she sends me a text. She says, hey Marv, can you tap into my system? I'm not doing well. My energy is down. My stomach's not doing great. I don't know what it is, what, what's changed, but can you kind of tap in and, and ask my body what's going on? And I said, sure. And so I said, give me a few minutes and I'll, and I'll call you back. And she said, okay. And so I went through this process asking her body what was going on and it told me that she was having a sensitivity to eggs. She was having a food sensitivity and it was to eggs. And so I called her back and I said, hey, I said, your body says you're having a sensitivity to eggs. Is there any chance you've had more eggs than usual? She says, oh my gosh, you gotta understand that this resort that we're staying at, breakfast buffet every morning, and those of you that have done those breakfast buffets, I mean, eggs benedict, uh, scrambled eggs, egg omelets, I mean, in any way you can think of an egg being cooked, it's there, and so you're having eggs just about on a daily basis, but the problem is, most people can only process so many eggs in a week. And if you're exceeding those levels, then it can create uh, problems. The same thing with, with grains. If we're overdoing in gr with grains, that can create problems as well. Um, so that's, that's coming from more a nutritional um, area. So now when we talk about the emotional side of things, understand... Um, how the body can communicate to us emotionally. Now understand that um, whatever we believe subconsciously is what the conscious mind creates. So um, our beliefs can be created by things that we've been told or uh, in our upbringing as a child, somebody has said things over and over to us again and again, and we've heard it enough that we give it power and think that, give it truth, okay? Like, uh, um, you're so stupid. Okay, you're, you're, you're dumb. You can't do anything, you know, and you hear that enough, you know, sometimes we, on a subconscious level, we begin to believe it. Okay. Um, and so it's important that we're not giving the subconscious mind so much power when it comes to our beliefs. Now there's, uh, I know in some of your other mastermind classes, I've heard people talk about um, how you can work with some of these different emotions. And I wanna just share with you uh, how you can do that. Um, first off, we learn how the body communicates um, by asking the, the subconscious mind particular questions, okay? And it answers us in the form of numbers. Those numbers often come to us on a scale of zero to 10. 10 meaning there's complete truth to a given statement. Zero means there is no truth to that statement. And so we can ask the subconscious mind these questions. And what we do is we listen for a number that pops into our head. That is the subconscious mind telling you how powerful that belief or how much power we are giving that belief or that emotion. Okay. And so for an example, if we were to have to, if we were to ask our subconscious mind uh, a question like I'm stressed, and you are stressed, you might hear a 10 pop into your head. But if you're not stressed at all, you might hear a zero. But the numbers can also be anywhere in between. It could be a five, it could be a seven, it could be a three, depending on how stressful you are. We can ask questions like, I'm angry. And listen, subconsciously, how angry am I? On a conscious level, we might feel fine. But if we go into the subconscious, then we also, it's important that we do that because it's the subconscious mind that deal, deals with beliefs and patterning. So if we're giving something uh, power, then we're creating more of that in our lives, okay? So if I believe I'm angry, I'm gonna be angry because the conscious mind says, okay, they wanna be angry, let's give them reasons to be angry, okay? Or, you know, I, I, I feel anxiety. Let's give them reasons to feel anxiety, all right? And we can go in and we can release those feelings and those emotions in a very short period of time without the need 
of going on Xanax for anxiety or taking Wellbutrin or Zoloft or, or some of these antidepressant medications. And I'm not saying those can't be helpful for people, but this is very quick and we can help people release these out of the energy fields of the body. Now, the question that we often all ask is, um, you know, and this is a big question. You know, if you ask, do I love and accept myself? So uh, do I love and accept myself? Yes or no, you know what I mean? Or what number pops into my head when I say I don't love and accept myself? And if it's a high number, understand, it's creating self-sabotage. It's creating more situations that keep you feeling poorly about yourself. And so anyway, so what you need to do is once you get those numbers, um, then we, you learn to, to work with them. And I wanna I want show you some things that you can do because I know that one of the, uh, one of the things that um, many of uh, your people in your mastermind classes have talked about is, is anger and, and forgiveness and how important that we don't hold on to the anger in our lives and that we do have forgiveness. Um, and so if those numbers are high, then we need to work to let it go. So what I want you to do is just for fun, those of you that might be out there, I'm gonna ask a question. I want you just to listen for the number that pops in your head, okay? And then just pay attention to what that number is. Uh, I'm stressed, okay? Just think about the first number that pops in your head. Uh, I feel anxiety, okay? What number pops into your head? And then I don't love and accept myself. Again, what number pops in your head? I'm angry. Let's look at the angry one. I'm angry. Because this is, this is a key one, especially when it comes to forgiveness, okay? And again, when we're angry, sometimes it's hard to let anger go because in our minds, sometimes we feel like it's safer to hold on to the anger because if we do, then it gives us reason um, to not have to deal with those, those, that person that we're angry at. Um, but it's very unhealthy. And when we're angry at people, uh, we're literally giving away our power. We're giving that person uh, our power and we're making ourselves sick. Many of them are going on in their lives and they don't even know, that, and you don't even know that they're angry and they're going on not giving, not caring or knowing, and yet you're making yourself sick. And so it's important that, that we learn to let go and, and forgive ourselves. Now, um, you might, those of you, because uh, many of you might be very religious, uh, in the Bible, if, if you recall, Peter went to Christ in the book of Matthew and asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? And do you remember what his answer was? 70 times seven. Now, does that mean we only have to forgive people 490 times? Now, we, we understand that the metaphor there is that we should be forgiving everybody every time, okay? And so, and, and ourselves included. We're our own worst critic or, you know, we're the hardest uh, uh, on ourselves. And so, um, anyway, imagine having so much fear and anxiety, especially with the COVID right now, that you're so uh, nervous and fearful that you're tear, tearful all the time. You can't control your emotions. And these are, live, these are real things that people are coming into my office for. And in an hour, I can release the fear and the anxiety around that. And all of a sudden, they're not feeling an emotional around it. They're not crying on a continual basis anymore, okay? And so anyway, so what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through a quick process. Um, so those of you with the anger, let's say the anger was a five, okay? So what we're gonna do, and again, we're gonna use a, a technique called EFT or the emotion freedom technique. And many of you, uh, again, it's been uh, demonstrated in many of these mastermind classes. But what we do is we find the knife edge of our hand and we can just tap it. And so I want you to tap and I'm gonna walk you through just a little script. And, and then we go back and we ask how strong that, that anger still is, okay? So, uh, so you might repeat af after me, just even though I'm angry, 
I am so angry at, and you can mention that person's name or that situation. I'm so angry because of that. But I'm beginning to realize how unhealthy that is because I want to be happy. I don't want to be angry. So I'm choosing today to let the anger go. And as I let it go, I replace that anger with feelings of forgiveness, unconditional love and acceptance in my heart. And I'm gonna do this for me because I deserve to be happy. I wanna be happy. I'm a child of God and I'm entitled to it. So I now choose to let it go. Thank you for this healing that is taking place. As I'm learning to love unconditionally. Because I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Okay. And then often we can go back and ask. Okay. I'm angry. And often what will happen is where maybe it was a five before. You're thinking, gosh, you know, I'm not as angry as I was a minute ago, but I'm still kind of a two. All right. So then what we can do is we can go back and say, okay, here we go again. Even though I'm still angry. I'm having a hard time letting it go. But I'm beginning to realize how much better I could feel if I were to let it go and have unconditional love in my heart and forgiveness. Again, I do this for me. I don't want that feeling. I don't need it. I don't accept it anymore. So I let it go. See ya. <laughs> okay. And then we go back and we ask, and all of a sudden, hey, gosh, I don't feel angry anymore. You know, and sometimes it's hard to let it go. And sometimes we actually, uh, there's resistance in letting it go. And, and there are other techniques that we can use to, to get past that resistance so that then we're free to let it go. And again, we start to feel better. And as we do that, it's amazing the difference that, that these things can make. And in, in one hour of working with people, it's amazing how many things that can be released and how many belief systems can be changed. How much, how often we, we don't believe we're enough. Um, we're, you know, again, I'm depressed. I don't feel good about myself. I have low self-esteem. I mean, what are we telling ourselves on a continual basis? And if we can release those things and those beliefs so that there's no truth to that anymore and that we do love and accept who we are versus we do not, all of a sudden we're creating positive experiences in our life and things begin to change. And the more we stay positive instead of negative, the better we feel. And that positive creates vibrational energy in the body. And if you think about and this, I know we're about done time-wise here, but I just wanted to just throw this out. I want you to pay attention to how this makes you feel. I'm gonna say some words and you tell me just how it makes you feel inside. Depression, sadness, anxiety, guilt, grief, anger. How do you feel? Do you, can you kind of feel sadness? It feels pressure. It feels, it just it doesn't. Feels it feels yucky. It feels yucky, <laughs> yeah. you know? And if, and if we're holding on to those beliefs and that energy all the time, I mean, think about people you know that are in that energy all the time. Is it, do you want to be around those people? No, because they're going to draw your energy and they're going to suck you dry, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But now think, think about this. How does this make you feel? Happiness, joy, love, gratitude, amazing. Can you feel the difference in the energy that comes with that? How good it feels and you want to be a part of that. And so, and, and this last example is, I want you to pay attention to how your body feels when you do this little exercise. Just pay attention to your whole system. I want you to smile as big as you can smile and just feel what's going on in your body and how good that feels. 
you feel your internal organs, they almost feel like they're lifting. Can you feel it? Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to just do the biggest frown you can do. And you feel everything sink and drop into your lap, all those internal organs, and we're sad and depressed and all those ugly emotions all the time. Understand, you cannot feel good. The systems and the organs, they can't work the way they need to if we're giving those negative beliefs and energy so much power. And that's why it's important that we release those and allow us to, to be positive and focus and forgive ourselves of things from the past. Um, all these experiences, you know, emotionally, physically, uh, helping nutritionally. I mean, again, I, I mentioned, uh, I think you mentioned the bio. I work with animals, animals feel emotions. And I've, I, I know we're out of time, but I've got amazing stories of horses and dogs and cats and animals that I've worked with that from an emotional level are different animals now. They perform, these racehorses I've worked with, they perform totally differently and they're winning. Um, in these races that they're involved in. And it, it, it's amazing. But again, you have to listen. You have to remember the body is continually communicating, but are we understanding? Are we listening? Do we know what it's telling us? And that's what I, that's one of my expertises is, as I teach people, is I can help them understand their body and what it's trying to tell them, where they might be lacking, what emotions they might be holding on to that are not serving them in a positive way. And it could be making them sick. So anyway, it's been fun. I've just, I just, I just love talking about these things because the body, this is one of God's amazing creations. And again, I could go into story after story of other ways that, that it's connected. And anyway, Thank you for allowing me to be here. I'm, I'm open to questions. And I know, Alicia, you might have uh, just a little closing, something you want to talk about. But I'm going to turn it over to you for a minute and then. Awesome. Well, Marv, you did an incredible job. I mean, you are just a fountain of knowledge. I've just loved you. I love every time I go to you, I'm always questioning, OK, why did you do this? What did you do this? How come this works? And you just educate me and you have for the last, you know, almost 20 years now. And I wouldn't even be where I am without you because your knowledge has taught me how to be more in tune with my body, with my mind, my heart and everything. And it's taught me how to do that with my children too. So you are just an amazing, amazing man. And I'm so grateful for the talents and the knowledge that you have, the wisdom that you have. And um, I want to go ahead and give you some time to share what your offer is. And then when you're done with your offer, go ahead and we can turn the time over some, to some questions that may be having. Okay. Um, well, you know, uh, I, I do teach classes. Um, if, if somebody would be interested in doing something, maybe getting a group of uh, friends together, um, we, could, we could look at many things and come up with... Uh, you know, a, a, a fair price for a class. So if, if somebody would be interested, I'm open to, to doing something like that. I, I, I've done that before, but also, um, you know, I, I, I'm willing to even offer a, uh, a package deal in some one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, normally for people, many people that do the kind of work that I do, charge anywhere from $150 on up per session. Uh, I am willing uh, for anybody that's, that's maybe listening to this and, um, and wanting to do something to maybe investigate or maybe try to find out some things that might be going on in, in their lives that we could help them better, um, their health or whatever it might be, or release many of these traumatic experiences or emotions or, or whatever. Um, what, what I've done is, is put together a package deal. Um, if you pay up front, uh, I'll, I'll give somebody six, uh, and, and each session is roughly about 50 minutes, 50, 55 minutes um, for $350.
So, uh, and that's, and it really is a good deal. Um, but we can, we can kind of really try to tap in and, and just address a lot of issues in those six visits. So it, those six visits, $350, I think it's a screaming deal. Oh yeah, definitely. And are you just offering this to one person or is there anybody who comes to, to this uh, particular yeah, training? I, I, it would be for anybody that comes. I don't want you to think that you can buy a package and share it amongst six people. Um, this okay. would be a, a package for one person. Per person, okay. Per person. And then, uh, you know, we would just chip away each visit um, until they've used up all their visits. I love that. That is going to be so awesome. So how can they contact you? Uh, they can send me an email. Uh, my email address is marvindias at gmail.com. And again, it's M-A-R-V-I-N-D-E-U-S at gmail.com. Uh, they can also call me on my cell phone number. It's my, my work number. It's area code 801-860-9688. Again, area code 801-860-9688. And if, even if you have questions, um, call me. I'm, I'm happy to talk to you and, and maybe share some ideas of things that may be ways that uh, we could help you or I could help you. And can they also contact you through Messenger? Uh, sure, yeah, okay. on awesome. Messenger Facebook, that'd, that'd be great. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we got a few more minutes. Do you have any questions, Jane? Um, I was just going to mention to the group that uh, one, I'm like you, Marvin has worked with me and I was in a very, very serious car accident uh, where a semi truck hit me and broke my back, my ankles, uh, and did a lot of damage. And I was in constant pain. And then once I started working with Marvin, um, he was the first person that I ever have been to. And I went to many, many, many until I found him who completely reduced the pain. And I have literally very little pain now. Now my pain is more a signal to, because he's taught me this, more of a signal of something emotionally that's blocking me, or I have been doing something physically, you know, like out gardening or doing lifting or doing something and pull something out of whack. And I don't wait to uh, have myself say, well, maybe I'll feel better for <laughs> the price that Marvin charges, which honestly he could charge double easily. Mm -hmm and um easily. and easily and i immediately go in or i do a remote and the next thing it, it, and, and it works so so well i mean the remote work he, he will give you story after story of the number of places that he's done that remote work and we don't have to understand how that works because maybe this worked you know, in a past lifetime and other, you know, other cultures that it worked and, and we don't know about it. And maybe he'll tell us about it. And we're like, well, that's kind of weird or goofy, but then it works. And mm -hmm. he'll, he will be happy to tell you, you, you might have to, Alicia, ask him the horse story, but I will share with oh, you. Oh yeah. He's, he's, he shared it with me, but yeah, I think it would be great. Have for him him to share it that. with the group. I, I'm just going to say this, that I have two dogs named Thelma and Louise. And my Thelma is a very intuitive dog. And many times she will act out the feeling that I cannot handle myself. So um, she literally could not walk exactly one year ago, exactly at this time, one year ago, something big happened. And um, she intuitively knew it was going to happen. So I took her in for because she couldn't walk I mean she could not walk and Marvin immediately sat down worked with her worked with her energy and and she she trotted out she trotted out of his office now the very next day the bad thing that was going to happen happened to me and I then had to come back in and work with Marvin that week as well but she signaled me that something was going to happen. We cleared her and then it happened. And then he came back and he cleared me. 
where I could have held on to all of that trauma and I had so much of it that it spilled out to my pet. So the fact that he was able to help my pet and me was amazing. So I'll pass it over to you, Alicia, to ask him about the, the horse story. Yeah, definitely. We got a couple more minutes. So Marv, if you could share about the horse, that was pretty amazing um, story that you shared with me a week or so ago. So if you want to well, go ahead just, and share, I'll give it back to just, you. And I'm going to give you the, the, short, the short version because I know we're out of time. But basically, um, this client of mine that uh, I told you about that was holding the sheetrock up with her head, well, mm -hmm. she, she had heard that I'd worked with animals before. And so her daughter has racehorses. And so she was sharing the story with her daughter and her daughter says, oh my gosh, I have one of my racehorses has an anger issue and it has a sore, what they call a hawk, which is mm -hmm. a sore part of the leg. And, and another racehorse has a sore stifle, which would be similar to like our kneecaps. And so anyway, she, she calls me and says, would you be willing to work on my horses? And I said, sure. So I worked on both of the horses. I worked on the anger issue that the one horse was having and balanced the, the horse structurally on an energy level, also balanced the other horse energetically. And again, I spent about three hours um, on the two horses over a three day period of time. And I called her back on the third day to say, okay, I just wanna let you know I'm done working on uh, the horses. So just watch them now and see what kind of notices that you feel or you see. And this was like late morning, early afternoon. And she says, oh my gosh, I got to tell you, I rode the, the one horse was named J.R. Parker, uh, the one with the anger issue. I rode him this morning, totally different horse. I can't even believe it. It was responding to me and not fighting me anymore. Oh my gosh, a totally different horse. And now I'm going to ride the other horse, uh, which is named Upstream Jack. Um, I'm going to ride him this afternoon and I'll let you know. Well, she, I, I never heard back from her that afternoon, but I did find out that they, they left that evening. They drove to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma to race these horses. And uh, they, they both performed really well. Um, J.R. Parker, he, he did stumble for some reason, which kind of put him out of a cash prize, but uh, Upstream Jack won a huge cash prize that allowed uh, him to pay for their whole trip down there and stuff. And so she came back wow. so excited and the, her, her daughter also races horses and says, mom, do you think he'll work on my horse too? <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, dogs or animals are very sensitive to emotions as well. And if well, we and to watch, energy as well. So I love that. So anyway, that's the story. Oh, thank you so much, Marv. And again, if you guys want to um, get in touch with Marv, if you have questions, you're welcome to get a hold of me. You can get a hold of Marv through Messenger. Um, you can get a hold of me through Messenger as well. And I would highly, highly, highly encourage you and implore you to go to Marv. Even if you feel fine, you can still go and have an improvement within your body, your mind, your spirit, and energetically so that you can perform at a higher level and be able to really connect to your highest true self. Can I say one thing, one last yeah, thing? Yeah, go for it. So, so understand that when you let these things go, the emotions and belief systems, we feel lighter from the inside out. Yes. That's what yes. people say. Oh my gosh, I feel like a burden has been lifted. I feel lighter. I can breathe deeper. I feel yes. so much better. And that's what people feel. And that's what, what they're telling me as we do that. And, and it's so it's huge as far as helping us to feel better. It's so can true. I, I, can I ahead, add Jane. one more thing? Uh, yeah. I, I lost a hundred pounds. Ooh, and awesome. Mar Marvin helped me also lose that weight because it was emotional weight. Yeah. And the other thing is I went through a really bad time of dealing with grief, not losing an individual, but I lost a large sum of money and you can grieve over a person, but when you have uh, an, in you lose a large sum of money that it took you 30 years to accumulate. And there's no way, at least in your mind at the moment, that you can change that. Uh, that was a really devastating thing. So grief, weight loss, anger, 
uh, depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. confusion. With COVID right now, they say that brain fog is such a biggie for so many people. And uh, I just read a statistic yesterday that said over one third of America right now are dealing with anxiety and depression. And it's because they've been isolated with the COVID. So mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're, they're maxed out, but we still have to deal with it. And it's important to be able to be open to what we need to do, each person, and sometimes having a session just on clearing ourselves on that alone is, is worth it. So it is. thank you, Marvin. Thank you, Alicia. I, you're both wonderful. Thank you so much for allowing me to come in and share this with you. You're awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. And we're gonna go ahead and end, but thank you so much for joining us. Those that join us um, on the recording, please reach out if you have any questions. If you want to get in contact with Marv, please reach out for that too. And you guys have a fantastic day.